Now we all know Sapphire, they make graphics cards, like this one, the 6700 XT, that frankly, you just can't get hold of at the moment. But once upon a time, they did actually make other products like motherboards and CPU coolers. And now they're gonna give it another go by making two all-in-one liquid coolers. Let's do this. Are you a champion in the making? Yeah, I mean, my mum always calls me a little champ, so... Then you need the new Corsair Champion Series K70 10 keyless keyboard to heighten your gameplay and really kick the competition's ass. So I'll be an even better gamer if I get one? Yes, thanks to the 8000 Hz Hyperpolin, a durable aluminium frame and a tournament mode switch that disables the macros and lighting for those intense gaming sessions. You'll be tearing up the battlefield in no time. Wow, I can't wait to show everyone my sick moves. Yeah! No, no, stop that. Stop that now and click the link in the description below. Seriously, stop dancing. <laughs> so as I mentioned, this isn't Sapphire's first kind of attempt at making something different. They have actually made a CPU cooler before. It happened to be an air cooler and it actually featured vapor chamber cooling. I think it was actually the first CPU cooler to be able to do that. This is actually their first attempt at making an all-in-one liquid cooler. Now I say making because we all know how it is. These days you can just find an OEM or an ODM and then you can basically say, this is what we want to do. Can you do it for us? Put our name on it, do it to our design and spec and basically go from there. So that's essentially what they've come up with here with the Nitro Plus. So they've kept with the same kind of marketing term as their graphics cards and gone with Nitro Plus. They have got the 240 mil and the 360. Whether kind of other models come at a later date is anyone's guess at the moment, but these are definitely the most popular sizes, so it makes sense to kind of go with that. There's obviously certain elements to this that I want to talk through because with an all-in-one liquid cooler, you can kind of break it down into different sections. Now, straight away, there is availability for the latest mounting mechanism. So we're talking AMD with AM4 and we're also talking Intel with Socket 1700 for 12th gen Alder Lake processors. So we have the latest and greatest support. So straight off the bat, they're not kind of, you know, on the back foot, shall we say. I wanna focus on the 360 because I do feel like 360 is probably the most prevalent now with the way that the price of these have come down so much. And that is actually one thing, I haven't been given pricing. So hopefully by the time that we actually release this video, we can put some pricing somewhere on the screen for you guys to kind of get a better understanding as to what's going on. I wanna talk about the CPU block to start with because that's kind of essentially where all the magic happens. There are different ways of obviously making an AIO and depend on who you go with to actually manufacture the AIO can really depend on the way that it's built. And that purely comes down to the Acer Tech patent that we all remember went kind of here, there and everywhere a couple of years ago with Cooler Master. And now that basically says that you cannot have a pump inside the CPU block if you wanna be selling them in America. Instead, you have to either use it like, I think the brand is Apple Tech, which means that the pump is actually in the radiator or you do like Be Quiet did with a pure loop and you actually have it in line in the tubing. This is Acer Tech, so we've got no real kind of issues there. We can obviously have the pump inside the block itself. The pump design, I'm gonna be honest, I saw it for the first time when I unboxed this, just to have a little look. I wasn't overly struck on it. I don't think it's the prettiest design in the world. They call it a spider cap design, and this is basically what it looks like. To me, it just looks a little bit on the cheap side. It looks a bit gimmicky. I mean, it looks plastic because frankly, it is plastic. It just doesn't really, I don't know, give me that whole kind of premium look that I'd expect from other kind of brands on the market who have very, very similar AIOs with very, very similar technology like NZXT. They use seventh gen Acer tech. This is seventh gen Acer tech, but this is what we get. There is a little bit of a saving grace. We have got ARGB on here and we will obviously overlay some B-roll shots and everything showing that off. So you can see exactly how this looks. I would say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but for me, it just doesn't look amazing. I'm sure the kids are gonna love it. And that's kind of all that matters, you know. If that's the kind of design that you're going for and everything, then yeah, I guess I kind of get it. Now the pump itself will operate between 800 RPM and 2800 RPM plus or minus 300 RPM. So it's pretty much where we'd expect it to be. You shouldn't be getting any or even much noise from the pump itself. 
One thing I don't like, and I'll be honest, apart from the pump design, is the amount of cables that come out of here. I don't know why manufacturers are falling down this rabbit hole of kind of having a lot of cables and stuff, and I just want to be truthfully honest, but this isn't the worst that I've seen. MSI with the uh, Core Liquid K360, because it has a screen on there, it's literally got cables upon cables upon cables. But there are very good reasons why we have all these cables. So we do have a four pin PWM for the block itself. There is SATA power to obviously power the uh, pump. You have got your addressable RGB on here. If I actually take off this cable strap, you have got addressable RGB on here. And from what I've read, it has got, so you've got your female one here, you've got CPU fan here, and then we've got a proprietary connector on here and then a male addressable RGB connector as well. So from what I can tell, this has actually got a pass through. So if you have got other devices that are addressable RGB, you can actually plug into here, then plug this into your motherboard. So it has a little bit of extra functionality if you're using say LED strips or something like that. Now it does have this proprietary connector, which I'm guessing is actually gonna be for the fans to connect into. So the fans can connect into this and then sort of one cable out that powers everything, even though there is more than one cable. Now, in terms of noise from the pump, they are saying or claiming 20 decibels is gonna be the maximum that you're gonna get. And to be fair, this is the seventh generation Acer Tech pump. So we have seen the good, the bad and the ugly and things have got a lot, lot better. Based on my experience with the NZXT ones, which were the first, I believe, to market with the seventh gen pump, it's all good now. Everything is fine. It's probably regarded as one of the best pumps on the market. With that in mind as well, performance should be very, very similar to NZXT and some of the other brands out there who are using exactly the same technology. Let's talk about the radiator because no two radiators are the same, you could argue, but you could also sort of argue that, you know, design is a, a big thing when it comes to the radiator, especially depending on where you're actually gonna be placing it inside your case. The radiator itself comes in at 27 millimeters thick, so nothing kind of too out of the ordinary, shouldn't have any problems with placement and things like that inside your case. So I feel like Sapphire's kind of maybe chosen, you know, not to go too thick on the radiator, diminishing returns when you go kind of too thick that you're not really gonna see any benefits is the juice worth the squeeze is what I'm kind of trying to get at. The only problem I have with a radiator really is, you know, size wise it's good. We've got a 360 mil, 27 mil thick radiator, but it just looks like a boring generic radiator, especially with brands on the market who are very, very competitive at the moment, like Lee and Lee, who are offering up theirs with kind of a silver shroud on it with a logo on it. There's just nothing on here. It just looks like it came off of a shelf, got put together, and then they kind of designed the pump. And well, that's pretty much it. Now, when it comes to the hoses, we have got EPDM tubes with nylon mesh. Now, EPDM stands for ethylene propylene diene monomer, or to make it easy, it's a type of rubber. Now, these are 400 mil long, so again, placement inside your case, you're not really gonna have too many problems. Now, I know some people do kind of hate the fact of tube placement sometimes, if this was kind of in your radiator like that, and I know people are gonna say in the comments about the the radiator positioning, it should be up the other way, but let's just go with this for now. You're gonna have it kind of sitting in your case, kind of like this, just to get the logo up the right way. And it does look like potentially we can't take this off. So this is basically the way that it's gotta go. You can't rotate it, it can't be pulled off or anything like that. So again, maybe missing a trick, especially compared to some of the competitor products on the market. Now, obviously there is another part of the AIO and it's, frankly, none of this. And that comes down to the fans. Fans can make a huge difference and be prepared because I know how these are gonna look as well. And again, I'm just using my own personal preference here. I'm not a massive fan of these fans. These are Sapphire's hybrid fan design. And this is what they look like. Now, I get it. If performance is kind of what you're really trying to sort of, I guess, aim towards, then apparently these are gonna be amazing, especially because they are based on the technology that is in their graphics card. These fans are a hybrid design. So basically what that means is instead of just having six, eight blades, something like that, it actually has kind of a shroud around the edge, which helps kind of create a little bit of a vortex. These are gonna be perfect for getting the benefits that I guess you get from certain fans, but not from others. Now, what I mean by that is with these fans, and you do get different types of fans, you can get the ones with you know lots of blades on them like this, you can get the ones with hardly any blades, you can get blower style 
fans and, and things like that. And the big problem is when you look at it, and I've just noticed actually, this one has a longer cable on it. So I'm guessing this is actually geared to be the furthest one away from the block, then the next one, then the next one. So it kind of makes sense that they've done that, which is quite clever really, instead of having unnecessary cable length on the other ones for no apparent reason. When it comes to a blower style fan, you're always gonna get amazing performance, but the trade-off with that is always gonna come down to the noise that you're actually gonna generate, generate from a blower style fan. The other option is obviously looking at um, sort of your conventional fans, which while they are gonna be extremely silent in comparison to a blower style fan, they're never gonna push through the same amounts of air pressure that you'd expect from a blower style fan. These are said to basically give you all of the benefits of both without the drawbacks. So yes, it's gonna be potentially a little bit noisier, but Sapphire are actually claiming that these are quieter and they push through more airflow than some of the competitor products. Now Sapphire actually compared their 360 mil, I believe it is, to the Ryujin from ASUS, the K360 from MSI, and the 360 mil AIO from EK. Now, for us, it makes sense to test this on the latest platform, which is Intel Alder Lake 12th Gen on the 12900K because it does currently generate the most heat across all of the CPUs that are on the market. So we wanted to test it, but the problem with that is it is socket 1700, which this does support straight out of the gate, but our Azus Ryujin, which we've had for a little while, doesn't. Our EK1, as far as I know, doesn't. We had to look at what we've actually got available to us so we can do some direct comparisons on this and see what it's all about. So we've got our test bench down there. We are gonna hook this all up. We're gonna show you exactly what it looks like once it is actually on a test bench, and then we can do some comparisons. For that, we've got a Notua D15S just to kind of set a bit of a benchmark when it comes to air cooling, probably the most popular air cooler in the world. We've then got obviously the 360 mil version of this, a Corsair H150i Elite LCD, and then the MSI Core Liquid K360. So let's jump in and show you them benchmarks. So when we started testing, everything kind of seemed to be frankly okay. Apart from it all lighting up like a full on spaceship, as you can see here, I mean, some people are gonna be into that. Now, when it came to the actual results, things were looking good. We had decent idle temperatures. We had decent idle noise. It was then when we actually started putting a load in it in terms of Cinebench R23, that things just completely went awry. With all of the AIOs that we actually tested today, the one from Corsair, the MSI, of course this, and even the Notua, we have done absolutely nothing with any fan curves. We have set the BIOS to optimize defaults. So we are essentially letting the fans and the pump and everything to do with the AIO do its own thing. So that, in my opinion, is gonna be the fairest way of doing things. Now, what we found is that while it did keep the temperatures down, and in theory was actually the best performing on all of the coolers that we had, including the air cooler, the noise that it outputted was just astronomical. It really did ramp up, and it was at a certain pitch that, in my opinion, even inside a case, just wouldn't really work. There are a few ways around that. You can look at obviously doing something like adjusting your own fan curve, or potentially Sapphire could maybe even do a firmware update. For me to kind of show you exactly what I mean, I'm gonna load up Cinebench R23 here. You guys, hopefully with the microphone and the positioning of exactly where it is, you're gonna be able to listen and you're gonna be able to hear exactly what's going on. Now, this is why we actually use a passive GPU for these types of tests, because we don't want anything influencing any noise or anything like that. So let's run it and you guys can sort of make out, you know, and make your own decisions based on that. So it's running now. And there we go, test is finished. Now I know some eagle-eyed viewers are gonna be like, yeah, but Andy, look at where the radiator is in comparison to the pump. I mean, if you really want, it's now higher than the pump. We'll run it again.
I mean, hopefully you guys can kind of get the idea. Um, we're not going to do anything to the audio other than what we kind of normally do. We're not going to superimpose anything. We're not going to louden it or anything like that. But I mean, straight away, you should be able to hear exactly kind of how bad that is. This is Sapphire's first attempt at making an AIO, but I kind of feel like they've maybe lost a few tricks. In the styling department, it's not my personal taste. I get it. That is going to be a subjective thing that's going to really come down to what each individual user wants. I'm sure, as I mentioned earlier, the kids are going to love it. When it comes to the performance, I do feel like not all hope is lost. There are some things that can be done. Like I say, adjusting fan curves, putting it into a silent mode, making sure that the fans don't ramp up above a certain amount of RPM. The amount of airflow that these fans push through, even at idle now, I can feel just sheer amounts of airflow being pushed through, which is a good thing. But does it need to do that at idle? And maybe things need adjusting just ever so slightly, taking from here and just kind of pushing to here so that the fans don't need to ramp up as much. Either way, I do kind of feel like it could be fixed. For a first effort, I'll give it to Sapphire. It's a valiant effort. I just kind of feel like there is potentially better on the market. And hopefully, like I say, by the time we actually come to edit this, we will put the price on screen. Maybe that could change everything. Bit of a weird one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Do we like the design of it? Is the price, if we can get it on screen, is it kind of enough to warrant overlooking some things? What price would this have to come in at to allow you to kind of overlook some of its flaws and some of its drawbacks? Really interesting to know, and I'm sure Sapphire will be as well. Whenever a brand brings out a new product like this, getting feedback, not just from us as reviewers, but you guys as kind of the consumer is so important to them. I'm sure they will take it as constructive and don't won't hopefully just feel like I've completely crapped on them in this video. That's never my intention, but I have to call it like I see it, or in this case, hear it. Yeah, hopefully it gives you an idea as to what this is about and potentially what could come in the future. There you go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.